Hi, welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Langers, and I am the overgrown child that is the Scruffy Trader. No shock looking at my artwork on the wall. And what I'm trying to do is kind of put trading in the real world. Maybe show you a trick or two along the way. So that sounds good. Click the little subscribe button. Genuinely helps. And let's get into this. So what is this we're getting into? Well, it's the end of the year. Time for reflection. And setting our stall out for the year to come. Now, I do this periodically throughout the year as well. It's normally at the end of each quarter. But the basis is always the same. So I'm going to talk you through what runs through my mind and then I'm going to show you the journal I've set up for the current year. And I do implore you to have a journal, even if it's just a notepad that you write your notes down. Because without a plan, you are definitely going to fail. And it's as simple as that. Because there isn't any businessman would go into the market without a plan. Yet in trading, which is a business, seems to be click a couple of buttons and that's it. I'm going to be driving my green Lamborghini. Get that one out of your mind, boys and girls. Mercs and Jags only. Odd Range Rover. Sorry. <laughs> um, the green Lamborghini seems to be the poster child of the clown, you know. <laughs> and there's no planning behind any of that apart from a glossy video that really doesn't tell you a great deal so let me get into this rather than rambling on about that sort of thing and I'll kind of try to explain what it is okay see planning is very very important but it doesn't have to be war and peace. You just have to be in the basic direction and then look to add to it as you go and get better. Now, I always have a little thought in my mind and it's a quote I heard many, many years ago and it still stands true and you'll hear me say it over and over. Know thyself. It is the beginning of wisdom. Why is that important? You need to know your strengths, your weaknesses, your personality. You need to know the charts and how they affect your personality. So what does all that mean? Well, it just means your personality is going to dictate the type of trader you are. If you're impatient and you have a tendency to fiddle, you need to work on that because patience is your key. Now, if you are a patient person, you might be overly conservative and not pull the trigger. So you need to work on that. And these are little things that you need to have in your journal that you're working on and things like that. But the underlining element of any plan is profit. And how do we get it? Well, I break it down kind of like this. I do this periodically throughout the year um, and it just seems to work for me. So the first thing I do is I look at the last sample of data. So in this exercise, we're just going to assume it's all of last year and you had one strategy because you base it on a single strategy, not multiple strategies. We assume we had 200 trades across the year. Busy year. Fantastic. I won a hundred of them. Amazing. I lost a hundred of them. Not so amazing. What does that mean, big lad? What the hell are you driving at? It's win rate. You need to understand what the win rate is. If you took 200 trades, you won a hundred and you lost a hundred, your expectancy is 50%, okay? So if I know going into the current year 
whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's moving average, cross, breakout, whatever it happens to be, is sitting at 50%. That helps me with the next part of the plan. And the next part of the plan is your risk reward. And as much as people kick it into me about risk reward and they say I risk too much for uh, the returns, etc. What they don't understand is everything I do has a risk reward within it. I just know how to manage a trade. I've already calculated how much I'm willing to lose before I've entered the trade based on what I'm getting back and based on my win rate. I have quite a high hit rate, so my ratio can be lower. But if I'm on something like the river strategy or something that I use for swing trading, I can't. I have to look at it in a different way because its expectancy isn't as high as swing trading isn't. And there's a big difference. Swing trading is perceived as easier. It's not. You have to manage your swings a lot more than your day trades. To predict a move in the next few hours is relatively easy comparing to predict a move over the next month. It really is because nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But you've got a good idea what can happen in the next few hours. And that is just nature of the game. It really is. So if I know I'm at 50% win rate, that means by nature, my risk reward wants to be one and a half times to one minimum. That way I know I have an expectancy of profit. Then I can work out what my current bid size is, roughly how much profit I'm going to make, and that will give me my goal. Simple stuff. And it really is that simple, guys. And I think somebody does it backwards. They'll go, I want 100,000. But if you don't know how many trades you're taking, what your win rate is, what your risk reward is, that 100,000 is a pipe dream. But if you do it the other way around, you can work out how many trades you need to make to get your 100,000 pounds, what bid size you need to be at to get your 100,000 pounds, what bank balance you need in order to cover the bid size to get your £100,000. Well, that kind of makes sense, but that's roughly how I start working out the plan. But then you have to journal it. And nobody likes paperwork. But believe it or not, a journal is your best friend when you're doing this for a number of reasons. One, it reminds you every day what you're doing keeps you on track with the trades that you've done. So you know if your hit rate is getting higher or lower. If it is coming down, your risk reward needs to go up. If it is all over the place, you need to focus on your strategy. Understand why it's all over the place. If you can't see it, then you then need to know thyself because the strategy might not be the problem. It might be you, but you'll never know unless you've got it on a journal explaining what your mood is, where you got in, where you got out, all of this sort of thing. It really doesn't. Let me jump on the screen and I'll quickly show you my journal and give you a little idea as to why it's there in the first place. Okay, boys and girls, at my desk, let me pull up my computer screens and I shall show you a quick journal. Okay, so what are we looking at? Well, my journals uh, are pretty simple in their design. I like to use a spreadsheet because I can alter them very quickly and they do a lot of calculations for me. So I'll quickly show you what I mean. So. To fill it in is very simple. All across this is pretty much auto calculating. It does a lot of it for me. So if I put the date in, pop the date in, you just put the current balance in, 
so up to 1,000. 5% uh, risk for argument's sake. Risk is one of those things that is individual to each trader. Now, I kind of agree you want it as limited as possible, but you've got to be careful with it. I work in money as opposed to percentage. I think once you start going down the route of percentages, etc., you kind of get lost in it all, thinking, oh, I must risk 2% or 1% of my account. Yeah, okay, all right. You might be around for a long time, but you're not going to make any money. What you're better off doing is putting in a reasonable percentage, but then looking at the money value that it generates. So in this case, am I willing to risk 50 pounds against a balance of a thousand? Yeah, because it's not going to dent it that much, not really. And then from here, I can then start looking at my bid size. Now, for argument's sake, when you're on a small account balance, thousand pounds, etc., you by nature you're not going to be able to have a, a big bid size. It's not like having a forty thousand pound account. You know, so say you're on a pound a point. So you pop that in. It automatically tells you how far away your stop is going to be. In this case, it's going to be fifty. You know, if I set that at point fifty. In other words, 50p a point, it'll tell me it's 100 points away. So again, your risk is telling you where the stop is going to be, and then you can look on the chart to see if it's in a logical place. And if it is, brilliant. You know, If you can adjust it slightly, you can maybe up your bid size. Oh, hello. There's your coffee. Oh, coffee for me. Spot me a coffee, my best friend. How good is that? Hey, hey. Since you're sitting there scantily clad, what's no. the chances of um, my my birthday present early? I don't know, I haven't got a bikini. Oh. It was worth a shot, guys. It really was worth a shot. But, April will be here soon. <laughs> right. Back to this. Anyway, as I was saying about bid size, etc. Um, once you've completed your trading, you can put in your profit. So say you want 25 quid. Yeah, auto calculate it. The, the other side of the sheet, you can sort of fill in as you go or at the end. Um, it's very simple. Gold. Trades for me is slightly different because I break my trades up. Uh, you'll often see me open multiple positions or I'll carve off as I'm going, depending on what I'm doing. But normally it's multiple positions that I class as a single trade. So I might open three or four orders and let them play out. And the, and the code that you will see in here is 1TP1. What does that mean? It just means it's the first trade, take profit one. If I add multiple orders, it'd be one TP2. Second take profit of the first order. Hope that makes sense. So pop in there. Long, because I want to know whether I was long or short at the time. What mood I was in. Good. And the reason as to why I went in. Could be overstretched or an MA cross. Whatever. All right. So you put your little notes in there. What's this got to do with the whiteboard? Well, it's actually this bit. That's to do with the whiteboard. So in there, you would just put your rules. Uh, why are you getting into a trade and what strategy you are using? So uh, as we said, a moving average cross uh, it could be a 21 crossing a 50 for argument's sake. And that's what you would put up here. 21 cross a 50 and then blah, 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 blah. In here is where I will put in my goal. And it's kind of based on the year. It, it, it always is for me. Because uh, my, my goals are not to get 50 quid or something like that. I'm looking to get a few thousand pounds for a holiday. Or this year's goal, uh, Joanne wants to move house. So I'll be working towards the associated costs with that. And then, of course, you have your salary. 
Okay, and I have a sheet like this for each one of my accounts, um, and it just helps me along the way. So, for argument's sake, if this is my holiday account, I will just put the goal in there. Holiday. How much I expect that holiday to cost? Well, decent family holiday for a year, uh, two thousand pounds, just just for rough figures. It then works out how much I need to achieve per month, per week, and per day to achieve that yearly goal. Well, straight away, if I'm looking for two thousand pounds, I only need to do one hundred and sixty-six pounds per month. Not a lot, not really, not in the grand scheme of things. And that's where it comes back to my win rate and price per point, etc. I can reverse engineer it. You know, if I've already had my sample of data and I know what my win rate is, I know as long as I keep it above 50% and I have. A risk reward of 1.5 I will be in the money now in this example when I'm looking at it I would be behind the game and why is that because my risk reward is not 1.5 okay I would need this to be higher you know if I go at 100 I get it at 2 you know so I needed to be at 75 so that helps me target this the trade as well all from a single sheet and it it looks odd and strange in the way that i'm doing it but it is literally just maths it really is i know if i lose 50 pound is going to go i know if it goes in my favor i need to get it to 75 pounds to get my 1.5 if I have my 1.5, I'm in line with my plan. If I'm in line with my plan, I get my goal. And I hope that makes sense. All right, and that's what that's for. Uh, and then keep a summary along the front. It does have a set of P and L's. This is just so I can quickly see what an equity curve is. And it'll work out my percentages, how many pips I've won, everything and then I can have notes throughout the year as well and it's the same across every single month and following on from your summary sheet you can drill into it a little bit more using a wage maker what's a wage maker got to do with the slice of bread well it kind of pulls everything into focus for you and it's it's broken up into two bits you have the wage size here and a single trade here okay and the way it works things out is on your average win so if you're going through the year and you're looking on here and you can see your average pip because it will tell you what the average pips are and you'll have had this from your last sample of data you can pop that into there you know on average for a day trader it's 20 to 30 uh, 20 is reasonably consistent um conservative rather and it can be consistent okay so i set this as an average win of 20 pips happy days base it on one trade and this is what you will get based on the bid size which is here okay so if you do 20 pips and you're at 50p, you'll get a tenner. Right? Simple stuff. And then it works out how much you'll get a week, how much you get a month, how much you get a year, all right? based on one trade at that bid size. But what it also works out is how long it's going to take you to achieve your goal on a single day. So for argument's sake, you want a reasonably nice Mercedes, uh, Thirty-five thousand pounds will buy you a very nice one. Um, this will tell you how long it will take you to get it, all right? And obviously, I don't want to be waiting three and a half thousand days. Okay, 
I want it down to about a year it's roughly about here that's pulled across there you go I made you shy of a five or a point to get me a nice car suddenly it becomes reality because a five or a point is not impossible and you don't need that big of an account to trade at that level All right. then you can look at this side and think well what do I want as a salary now we said a hundred thousand pound earlier on which I think is quite optimistic for a new trader but let's just say 30,000 because that's a reasonable salary figure you know you you have a job for 30,000 a year you're doing quite well mm -hmm. so again what do you need to achieve this goal well, actually just quickly looking at it one trade a day at just shy of six pound a pip will get you 30,000 a year simple and it comes down to something that I say constantly. Less is more. You see, you don't want to be in the markets all the time. The more you're in the markets, the more you're at the mercy of the market. But you can find 10, 20 pips relatively simple. Um, I proved that right through December. I traded at the end of the day and I found 10, 15 pips every single day. And I did it in front of you. Um, and that's essentially what I do for a day job. I don't flip around the markets all day. I really don't. I used to many, many years ago, and I lost a fortune. And then I figured out that waiting, journaling, and getting the perfect trade was more profitable than trying to hunt down every wave that's going. And it's something that I try and preach constantly, certainly to the followers of me and the Scruffy Squad and the Facebook group. Calm it down. Less is more. Um, and you'll find at the end of the month you have more money. Okay. And that is it. And then compounding plan is just a compounding plan showing you basically what you get by increasing your bid size slowly. And then back to your summary. So that's why I use a journal. It helps focus what it is that I'm trying to achieve. And ultimately, all I'm trying to achieve is my salary. So I hope that all kind of makes a little bit of sense. Um, it was really just a, a memory jogger before we start the new trading year on Monday of how important a journal is and if you put a bit of thought into what you're looking to achieve and you break it down into bite-sized chunks suddenly these goals are not as big as what you think they are you know and when you see somebody that's saying that they're on a pound a point don't mock them because they probably end up with more profit than somebody that's at five, six, seven pounds a point trying to be in and out of the markets all the time. Less is more. It's the moral of the story. And you just have to build. So set yourself a goal. Make certain it's realistic. If it's realistic, journal it. And if you journal it, you'll find how easy it becomes to achieve it. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to enjoy the coffee. I'm going to go and chase Winky around the house because we are like kids and get ready for the coming year. So remember guys, do what you love and the money will follow. See you all in the next one.